Hello! In the previous videos, you learned a little bit about um, how to identify minerals and, and what some of the major mineral, mineral categories there are. In this video, we're going to focus in on some of the more common minerals that we see, and specifically those that form igneous rocks. So, those include things like quartz, feldspars, micas, amphibole, pyroxene, olivine, uh, these are all different types of silicate minerals, which is the most common mineral that we find on uh, the surface of the earth. Uh, and then we also see ores that form uh, in relationship to uh, volcanic activity. And uh, there's some great links this week to look at uh, to uh, learn about some of those various uh, mineral ores. So these minerals that are the most common in volcanic rocks tend to form and follow what's called Bowen's reaction series. So if you start out with a magma um, with the same composition and we cool that magma over time, and in the next few weeks we're going to learn about how we get various rocks based on cooling rates and magma interacting and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, so we start out with a, a really, really hot magma below the surface and uh, the first minerals to crystallize are going to be the ultramafic minerals. So things like olivine uh, are considered uh, an ultramafic mineral. So they start crystallizing around 1300 degrees Celsius and then as uh, that magma chamber cools we move down the chart slowly to uh, the lower temperature uh, more granitic or felsic minerals that are common around 750 degrees. So this is a, if nothing is disturbed, this is a series of minerals that we see. So we're gonna walk through those here in the next few slides. And you'll see Bowen's reaction series again in uh, the videos talking specifically about igneous rocks. So the first mineral, so when you're looking at a rock, how, do you, how can you tell uh, what mineral is what? So for olivine, it's typically green in color, it has this kind of glassy, transparent look to it and it is the first to crystallize so it, and it typically has a spherical shape so you can see some of the um, crystals in these rocks here that have that nice round shape to them whereas the the rock over here is actually made completely of of olivine so this picture down in the lower right corner so it'll be olivine green in color glassy it's very very hard and uh, it usually has kind of a round shape to it the next would be pyroxene, so this is the next crystallize as that magma chamber gets cooler. And we see it a lot of times in the same rocks as olivine, you can see the same picture here. Uh, but pyroxene is going to be more of a, a dark brown black color and uh, will have a boxy shape. So we have a couple uh, that these yellow arrows are pointing to. Uh, that's dark in color, kind of boxy in in shape. So it um, typically forms sometimes with pyroxene, uh, as pyroxene forms with olivine, but we also see it with plagioclase feldspar, which is the next mineral that we'll talk about here. Um, and there's two different types of plagioclase. There's Ca plagioclase and Na plagioclase. So if we look back here to Bowen's reaction series, we have this continuous series where as that temperature drops, the crystal structure changes slightly. And at the warmer temperatures, the calcium ions fit into that crystal structure, whereas at the cooler temperatures, sodium fits in. And we have this gradual change that happens um, as that temperature cools. So when we look at these crystals under a microscope, we can actually see how the temperature changes in that magma chamber over time. We can see if it heats up uh, and we end up with more calcium forming. So as that crystal uh, slowly grows, we see these tree rings of the different calcium versus sodium concentrations in that single crystal, which is pretty cool. So uh, CA being the darker version tends to have a grayish black color to it. Um, it can be a little tricky when you're looking at a rock that's gray or black trying to see these the, the calcium plagioclase versus the pyroxene. The difference here is the calcium plagioclase has more of a grayish color whereas the pyroxene is a lot darker, has more of a solid black color and it's actually opaque so light does not transfer through it whereas calcium plagioclase it's translucent. Light can actually make it through a little bit. Uh, the lighter version, Na plagioclase, that is white in color, looks very, very similar. It's just a different color. Um, 
both kind of have a glassy shape to them and uh, also will have um, a boxy shape. And when a rock has been broken apart by a rock hammer, we tend to see uh, these minerals fracturing along their cleavage faces. So when you move the rock around in your hands, you'll be able to see the cleavage places flashing and reflecting the light from, uh, from the window or from the lights in the classroom. So amphibole uh, is the next step down, and we uh, have this uh, kind of an intermediate type rocks. It looks very similar to pyroxene. The difference is the shape it takes when it crystallizes in these rocks. So it's dark black in color, but instead of having a boxy shape, uh, it actually has more of an elongated blade-like shape like the picture we see here. The crystal pointed out is um, very, very thin and long in shape, more of a prism shape to it. Um, and again, this one, because it has cleavage, if it's broken just the right way, you can see the light reflecting off of it like we see here on this crystal just below the other uh, indicated by the arrow. Next step down would be biotite, another black mineral. Uh, this mineral is uh, a little bit different. If we think back to the previous videos, it has more of a flaky-like appearance to it. Uh, when we see it in rocks, we'll either see this round stop sign shape, or we'll see really, really thin, um, almost hair-like thickness, um, elongated crystals in, in the rock. Uh, if you can get a piece uh, with maybe a nail or your fingernail, you should be able to scratch it and flake some of those crystals off. It's a good way to tell what you have. And in some cases, it can actually have uh, a form in, in books, so it will look like pages of a book when you look at it in a, in a rock. The next uh, is potassium feldspar. It's another feldspar. This one is just potassium rich. It typically has a pink color, but it can also be white. When you're looking for uh, to identify feldspar, potassium feldspar in in an igneous rock, it typically is going to form with other minerals that form at the same temperature. So things like biotite, things like quartz, are typically found with those. So it's pink to white in color. You'll because it has cleavage. Again, you'll see the cleavage faces reflecting the light and sometimes if you have a big enough crystal to tell the difference between the, the potassium versus the CA and a plagioclase feldspars because those can be white just like this can be white you can look for these X solution lamellae that we looked at in the previous videos for the potassium feldspar and if you have a big enough crystal you sometimes can see the striations in the plagioclase. Muscovite is another mica, so again, it has the same shape and similar appearance to the biotite. It's just a lighter color. And again, this one can come in those stop shine shapes, the little thin blades, or the books like you see indicated in this picture. And then the last that we'll talk about is quartz. Quartz is the last thing to crystallize, so it fills in the spaces in between all the other minerals, so it kind of has an amorphous-like shape. It does not have cleavage, so you're not going to see any cleavage faces, but it will look like broken glass when you're looking at this in a hand sample. Uh, it can uh, come in various colors. Most commonly ones that we see are uh, smoky, white, and clear. Um, but occasionally you can get some of the other colors as well. And then the last would be these ores. One example that we'll talk about uh, real quickly is sulfur. So when you have uh, sulfur dioxide uh, coming out of uh, a, a volcanic area, like uh, here we have um, some uh, volcanic vents that can emit some of these uh, sulfur gases. When that sulfur dioxide starts to cool as soon as it comes out of the ground it actually starts to precipitate the sulfur and you can see that in the yellow areas in these pictures. There's a lot more minerals to talk about and, and ores to talk about that are related to volcanic activity and uh, the OSU link in your reading material is great. It's the OSU um, Volcano World website has a ton of information, great photographs uh, about the various minerals that are formed. So definitely check that out and just to recap the major minerals that we see that you should definitely be able to recognize before coming to our on-campus meeting are quartz, feldspars, so that's the calcium, the sodium, and the potassium feldspars, micas, amphibole, pyroxene, and olivine. And I'll have examples of these in class as well. So uh, we will sign off and see you in the next video.